Right, enough about backups and ransomware attacks and all the stuff I've been waffling on about in the last few videos. Uh, you know, the stuff that gets views and <laughs> lots of people watch. Back onto my usual jam. <laughs> the stuff that doesn't get many views. Oh, life choices. Uh, but this stuff tickles my pickle, floats my boat. This is super ultra-wide monitors, mate. And this is the Dell U4919DW. It is super luxury, high-end, massive, ladies, ultra-wide monitor. Uh, it's not new to the market. It's been out for a couple of years. Uh, but Dell sent me this a few months ago. And they were like, mate, we want you to show your audience what CAD programs look like on a super high-end ultra-wide. And I was like, mate, <laughs> mate. I got you there. You got the right guy for the job now. All right, before I, want, before I get started on this though, I just want to make sure we're on the same page here and there's no uh, misinterpretations here. I'm not pitching this in a way where I'm saying or even suggesting that everyone who's watching this should think about buying one of these because I think it's good. No, I, I, I'm well aware of how expensive these are and they're priced out of most people's budgets. And the monitor tends to be the last thing you put your money into when you're putting together a PC or a workstation build. I'm kind of coming at this from a couple of different angles. The first one is to let people know who've never seen their CAD applications on an ultrawide inventor, AutoCAD, Fusion 360, you know, visualization programs. See what it's like, experience it. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of people who've never seen even a 3440 by 1440 ultrawide run their CAD programs. But also with an eye on the fact that these are going to come down in price. And they have been coming down in price. They're always coming down. Uh, and whoever's watching this video, a lot of different people do. It could be a contractor, student, also people who are responsible for kitting out universities watch my videos. Myself, I'm responsible for deciding what hardware goes in a design office, hundreds of engineers. And I'm all too aware of how difficult it is to convince a procurement manager, financial officers to put money into monitors. The scene is an afterthought. The scene is something that's just mandatory. This is a slab of plastic on a desk that you sit and look at. Why would you ever spend more than what you need to on a monitor? What's wrong with the 23-inch 1080p monitor, the, the, the first ticky box on the spec sheet? It's a tough sell. However, I come from a school of thought where, actually, if you've got a really good monitor and it offers some features which the user can actually utilize, like a lot of screen real estate and good organizational capabilities, well then it can give the user productivity boost. It can give them a passive mood and a morale boost. It gives them a chance to better organize their applications and work smarter. They're not minimizing and maximizing things all the time. It's not gonna win over everyone. It's not an argument that's gonna fly with most people, but I do feel that way about these things. And I'm using this monitor as a test case. It's the Dell U4919DW. It's 49 inches in size from diagonal to diagonal. It's huge, it's 48 inches total width you need a big desk to fit this on so you've got to take that into account as well if you are thinking about something like this the resolution is 5120 by 1440 and 60 hertz refresh rate so it's not built for gamers you can of course you can play games on it absolutely you can play games on it and they look great with that much width ladies sorry i can't help it with that much width games look great but 60 hertz it's enough, it's enough for CAD applications. It's enough for me. It's an IPS panel, 350 nits peak brightness, uh, and it's got a 3800R curvature as well, which is 3.8 meters radius. Uh, I get questions on the previous videos that I've done, you know, for ultra wides. And some people might think these are daft questions. They're not. But some people say, well, CAD's all about geometry and lines. And don't those lines distort on a curved screen? It's a very valid question. They probably can do, you know, on it recently, some proper hardcore, ridiculously curved gaming monitors that look like an aircraft cushion, you know what I mean, or wrap around your neck, then possibly. But not on these. Uh, the curvature is so subtle, you, you don't notice it. Don't forget you are sat head on at eye level staring at the curvature, so you don't notice it. Also, make CAD applications have all kinds of design aids built into them, ortho modes, snap modes, constraints you struggle to draw something that's not straight on the CAD application. So no, you're absolutely fine with the curvature on uh, on these monitors. And it's got full height, tilt and swivel adjustability, which is just as well, because you're gonna need it when it's this big just to get it in the right position. It's 26 kilograms in weight. It's vase mountable. Uh, you'll need a pretty strong wall to mount it on, but you can do. And in terms of ports, uh, the, the ports, the connectivity are, I would say reasonable, but not spectacular for something at this level. So it's got two HDMI inputs. I think they're 2.0, I'll correct that 
on screen if they're not. Uh, one DisplayPort input, uh, one USB-C input, um, but it's also got good USB connectivity though for devices and peripherals. It's got five USB-A ports built into it for devices. And there's a reason for that because this thing has a built-in KVM switch. And there's a good reason why this has got a built-in KVM switch. And this leads me on to the second most useful aspect of a monitor like this. The first is just the sheer ridiculous gross size of this thing and having that much, it's an abomination of space. And that's the first useful thing about this. But the second useful thing about this is you can split this panel into two. You can give yourself the equivalent of two 27 inch monitors at 1440p resolution stacked side by side. And I'm not saying this just because I need something to talk about in a video. On the right hand side, the right half of this display, I plug in my work HP workstation through the HDMI port. On the left hand side, I have this PC here connected by a display port and that fills up the left half of the panel. So on one panel, I've got two completely different PCs on either side and each PC has more screen real estate than a lot of people have on a single monitor. It's mental. But the KVM switch, if you plug your keyboard and mouse into the USB ports on the monitor, you can bind a keyboard stroke to Dell's display software, which isn't actually, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. And you can switch your keyboard and mouse between either side of the panel. So if you want to use your keyboard and mouse on the left-hand side PC, you can do, hit the keyboard stroke and your keyboard and mouse move over to the right-hand side. Is what you would do, or you can use Synergy, which sounds like a segue into a sponsor spot, which it really isn't because I've bought it. I've never spoken them in my life, but I use Synergy and that is basically software KVM. It lets you simply mouse over from one PC to the other. Now, under normal circumstances, it lets you mouse over from one monitor, one physical monitor to another in the same room or the same, the same LAN, basically. So your mouse or keyboard will jump from one monitor to another in the same room. But when your PCs are essentially connected to the same monitor, then this happens. It's spectacular. It's, it's opened up a whole new world for me. I've got two PCs and I can just mouse between them like they're, like they're just two different applications on the same computer, but they're not, they're different computers. I still, every time I do this, I giggle like a little schoolboy. It's amazing, <laughs> I love it. So yeah, that's that's something I use pretty much every day uh, without fail. Uh, it's, it's, far, it's far too useful to not utilize that. But when it comes to your CAD applications, mate, there's there's all kinds of utilizations. See, I was mentioned earlier Dell's display software. Well, that lets you break your screen up into various different chunks, like different panels. You can break it up into three uh, thirds or quadrants or you know, slices, horizontals and verticals. And then using like the shift key, you can just hold down the shift, grab an application, snap it into one of the thirds, and then you can just dock your applications into each one of those segments and uh, organize your applications like that without having to manually drag them around or snap them using windows as top right or left or whatever. So there's that, but then there's also just running your applications at full screen, which is ludicrous. Put Inventor full screen and you've got almost one-to-one -one on some products, depending on what it is you're building. You can see your product at one-to-one -one scale on your screen and you've got the perspective and the, the viewpoints you get of what you're designing and building is right in front of your face, mate. You can see it for yourself there, how good that looks. Switching over to the likes of AutoCAD again, Auden survey maps, plans, designs, sketches, schematics. The the amount of, that you can see in one go is in less panning, less zooming around, right? I don't need to tell you how useful that is. You know, you as a designer, as a drafty, as an engineer, you know. Here's Fusion 360. Same again, I mean, you've seen it better, so I suppose you can see how useful Fusion 360 is, but just look how good it is. It's just weird. It's weird seeing them stretched out and across that much space. But And then here's Autodesk V-RED, a visualization program, especially useful for things like this, just to fit even more of your visualization on screen at any one time. So you can, you've just got that bird's eye view of everything that's being rendered and magnified to that kind of level, especially when it comes to ray tracing, when you need when you need a closer view of where shadows and reflections are and, and where the light's going to hit, you know, on a smaller panel, you'll be, things will be zoomed out further. You're not going to see the details, but on a screen like this, mate, it's just, it's magnified right the way up. You can see so much more in one go. Speaks for itself. There you are. That's the Dell U4990DW 5120 by 1440, 49 inch, ridiculously large ultra wide monitor. Luxury item, no doubt, 
Uh, hopefully they will come down in price at some point. Hey, if you've got some money left over from lockdown, you want to treat yourself, I can't recommend this enough. I can't go back after having something like this. 8K, 16K monitors, mate, fill your boots, not for me. I'm having one of these all day long. Uh, they're, they're too good. Ultra wide not have Premiere Pro timeline, editing videos, just the sheer audacity to be able to have that much space to, to edit a timeline with. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, that's me done. That's me uh, happy as a, a pig and crap. Hope you enjoyed it. If that's the first time you've seen your car applications on an ultra wide and you want this now, I do apologize, but hey, at least you know. Thanks very much. Uh, in the description of the video, I've got some links to my TFI store uh, where I've got links to Autodesk promotions. If you're interested in buying some Autodesk licenses or if you're upgrading your Autodesk licenses, I've got some links down there. Uh, Pluralsight, I'm, don't forget I'm a teacher on Pluralsight. I've got a couple of classes up on there and I've got an affiliate link there to sign up for any promotions or deals that they've got going on. So I've got a link to my website down there. Uh, check those out. Uh, any purchases that I made help support the channel uh, and are a huge help to me at the moment, uh, which you might find why later on. <laughs> right, thanks very much, and I'll see you all in the next one. Doodles.